welcome back, everybody, to another episode of It's Related. I, I promise. promise. If you can't already tell, we have a guest today, or maybe it's a new co-host. <laughs> 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 who knows? Who knows? We 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 her. Yeah. Anyway, guys, welcome to another episode of. It's related, I promise. We are joined by the very beautiful, magnificent. I'm not gonna do all those other adjectives that I did in, that day we were together. Um, this is Lydia KM. For those of you who don't know, she is a wellness content creator, mm -hmm. podcaster. Um, she also owns a business called Kagi. Is it Kagi or Kagi? Kagi. Kagi. Mm -hmm. Kagi Wellness. Mm -hmm. I am a purchaser of your. I'm a client. I'm a loyal <laughs> customer. Customer. Um, called Kagi Wellness, which is available, which can be accessed on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You sell um, merchandise and stuff that just puts a smile on people's faces, encourages them. Um, you have a lot of affirmation merchandise. So you have like flip cards. I've seen, I've seen t-shirts. I've seen mugs. You also have a, what's that tone called? The thing called back? Oh, oh, my skis are cheese. She does. Right? She, ha she does. Yeah. That has affirmations. Yeah. Levels. Everybody, Lydia KM, welcome to the podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. That was a good intro. Thank yes, you. Yes, yeah. yes. You're doing yes. a lot of things and it shows. Thank you. And yeah. I'm proud. I'm proud. Thank you so much for having me here. Of course. Actually, what I want to tell you is that um, before we started TMI, this is like now. July 2021 is when we started it. I was looking around for podcasts. I was just like, you know, who's like the baseline? Like, who can I, who can we look at and be like, okay, like this is the yeah. feel, this is the idea. And it's related, I promise, was like, okay, so like this, it's like these are the people oh. who are doing something that we admire and would like mm. to do. Like honest conversations, you guys are open, like mm. what you talk about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm so happy to be here. That's amazing. Mm. And actually similar for me, I remember, because I worked in like local TV mm. Um, a few years back in my career. Mm -hmm. And I remember when you guys started the mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. on Ebro, mm -hmm. and it was four co-hosts, yeah. I believe. Yeah. And I used to follow that show and I watched, I remember when you joined mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my God, she's my favorite one. Mm -hmm. Because I felt like I resonated so much with everything you were saying, just your vibe, your personality. Yeah. And like just having you here today, I'm like, this is, I feel like I kind of manifested it because I was like, I'd love to see what it would be like to be on a set in conversation with you. So Cute. I I'm love super it. Happy Women, we're amazing. Yeah. yeah. We inspire each other so yeah, much. And I yeah. think that's why it's so important we keep creating. Exactly. Yeah, there's somebody else watching who's going to say that and they're going to create something in amazing from watching you mm -hmm. guys. So yeah. Yeah. Love it. love it. I'm so happy to be here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in case you don't know, my name is Jules. You can find me on Instagram, Jules underscore her. I also have a podcast called So This Is Love, Shameless Plug. And to my far right, my name is Sharon, aka Shazo, <laughs> aka Sharon <laughs> Bashira. Sharon Bashira, <laughs> official. Yeah, official. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. my friends um, sometimes, you know, play off at me for. And you can catch me on Instagram at official Sharon Bashira mm -hmm. and TikTok as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So today's conversation is in regards to something that has been trending like crazy on TikTok. Yeah. Um, we're not at the at the peak of the wave, but I think it's still something that people are talking about just because of how monumental this story has been. Um, and this is, is her name Tessa or T uh, Risa? Risa Tisa. Risa Tessa. Tessa? I think it's Risa Tisa. Because it's from Teresa. Isn't yeah. that her full oh, name? Yeah. That's her full name is Teresa. Yeah. Check out, check out her TikTok. She did a whole um, series called that she labeled, who the fuck did I marry? Mm. Yeah. And this is like a, it's like a 60 part, no, it's like 58 part, let's yeah. say 60 part, um, series basically yeah. on her own personal story yeah. of how she met, married mm -hmm. and divorced this individual who we just can't believe this is what was happening in her life yeah. Yeah. at the basically during the pandemic. Um, but before we get into that, in true IIP fashion, we are starting our conversation with something that has caught our attention. I may have my notes. I have to do this every time because <laughs> I, I come here and I this get This is shocked. Julia's favorite segment. Uh, yeah, favorite. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically every episode on what's caught my attention, we just talk about something that has sparked an interest of late. Um, it could be anything. Serious, non-serious, doesn't matter. It's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's something that started as a joke, but mm. it's become a serious segment yeah. on this. Literally. On this, yeah, and I feel yeah. like each episode has so many 
th- I mean, so many elements, yeah. subtopics. Yeah. yeah. So because you're a guest, mm. I think I want you to start. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's um, caught your attention of late? Well, Sharon gave me a really good example. So Thank I think you. I'm going to just get on that. Yeah. Um, so I had um, interviews on NRG and Choice Radio on Friday, right? Mm. And then when I went there, what um, stuck with me was like how much I wanted to be on radio. At one You'd point, be great on radio. At one point, like they, I don't know where I have not auditioned to be on radio, where I have not really? interviewed in this Nairobi. I wanted it so badly. Yeah. Really? Yes. You'd be great on radio. Then I went on um I went on um on an interview, like my last one. And like uh-huh. the conversation was like when I was being interviewed, it was like, what did you want to do when you were like 20? Mm. Like how long have you been wanting to be on radio? And when I was sat there, I was like, none of this have anything to do with my talent, my capacity to be great on radio yeah. and like who I am right now because uh-huh. I, I changed my career from law to um, being a creative. So yeah. it's like, no, I don't have a thread showing me that I've been pursuing this all my life. And it looked like that's what I was being judged on. Mm. And I felt so fresh and I was like, that's the last time I'm ever interviewing on a radio. So when I went back, having TMI, like having your own exactly. thing, it made me feel like, do you know what, creators, it's, I think that's what we do wrong. It's like, we, ha- we, f- we have these structures that are already set up and mm. we are looking to be, to be part of them. And it's okay, it's wonderful if you find one. But if you don't, create your own thing. Have your tastes evolved or has your behavior evolved around mm. how you um, consume traditional media? And by traditional media, we, we mean radio, and TV. TV. Yeah. 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 Is there another traditional media? Newspapers mm. and billboards. Yeah. Anyways, something that's caught my interest. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> Kelly Rowland. Oh my God. Yeah. In, is it Mia, Mia Kalpa? Yeah. Mia, Mia Kalpa. Kalpa. She's too hot. So like, if y'all don't know, I don't know what rock you're living under, but Kelly Rowland starred in a film mm. that was written. Yeah, by Tyler Perry. I don't know if it was produced written. And written, produced, executive produced by mm. Tyler Perry, Tyler mm. Perry Studios. Um, and I was watching this film with so much, ad- like, have you wanted somebody to win so mm. badly? Like, I was watching and I'm like, Kelly, you got this. Don't yeah. fuck this up. <laughs> and the thing is, with Taylor Perry movies, like, usually his scripts, I find them <laughs> weak as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, the storyline, I'm just like, really... When that it's guy, so typical. Ridiculous. Like, it's so, like, like weak. Like, a ridiculous. weak storyline. It needs a bit of depth. Over-exaggerated. Of, over-exaggerated. Oh. And, and, and too simplified. Like, oh my gosh, I met this guy, he's a sexy artist, and yeah. now we're having sex. And then when he went, when he came and told... Mia Kalpa, I love, I love you. you. I was like, stop. Clocked out. <laughs> I clocked out. Because I'm like, how is this? You love somebody because you hook, you hooked up one time. And it just didn't make sense. Mm. It, you could tell it was not written by a woman who, right. is, like, who knows her shit. However, however, mm. Kelly Rowland actually ate that role. Yeah. And she, I'm so, I'm like, I mean, I, I, I'm very critical of like um, actors. Yeah. Like I, I, I used to do it for fun, even with my brother, with my dad. Like, we'd watch the Oscars, da, 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 and we're like, we like this performance, we don't like this performance. Um, so when somebody's a good actor, I I usually, am, I mean, I feel like I, I'm a good critic of a good actor and not a um, normal, mediocre, whatever actor. Kelly is not, like, there yet, but she's good. She's believable as an actress, and I'm so happy to see that because this is what I'm getting at, the comparison of Beyonce and Kelly. It's mm. just like, um, I don't know if you guys had... She walked off of the set of, I think it was Good Morning America, something. One of these um, TV shows, mm. um, breakfast shows. And she walked off of the set and it was like, oh, Kelly is so difficult to work with. Da, da, da. She walked off of set. This is now before Mia Cup actually mm. launched. She was just doing like the press yeah. tour. Yeah. Um, and they were like, oh, it's because she was not given the dressing room she wanted and then people said say first of all she's not beyonce she needs to oh, chill da, da, da. and then also now i just comparing her career to beyonce's now yeah. that was just an opportunity mm. and the point i'm actually getting at is that comparison of mm-hmm. of of people i've compared michelle kelly and beyonce i mean i can't sit here and say i've never yeah. done it mm. um but beyonce who i love guys like i'm obsessed <laughs> with beyonce <laughs> don't come with me that beyonce ain't shit because we're going to fight actually we can't be friends if we talk shit about beyonce <laughs> yeah. so but beyonce on screen yeah it's not her thing 
when she did dream girls and then she did the one with Idris Elba I was like mm-mm, 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 babe this is not for you yeah. I, I want you to succeed but this is not for you it's like it's a bit cringe when mm. she's in front of the camera she's not very natural even Cadillac Records the film she did the yeah. where she was um, Eta Jane uh, yeah she was acting as Eta, Eta, Eta Jane she was Eta. better at that one I liked that she was better but it was still like you could mm. it felt active it's just mm. not her yeah. It, yeah yeah it didn't feel but with, with Mia Kappa I could I was actually engrossed in the character mm. the script not so much mm. but the character are good. So uh, I'm so happy for Kelly because she's doing something that in my mind, in my eyes, she's a little bit better at than Beyonce. Beyonce is because her entire career she has been in Beyonce's shadow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. has been in Beyonce. So I really want her to win. And I don't want her to win and not to and Beyonce not to win. That's not what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like two like, things can be true. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like I think she is a little she is a little bit better in Beyonce. Beyonce is better than her in her career. You can mm. see, like in terms of who is a bigger performer. Star. Yeah. I mean, a bigger star. But it doesn't mean that Beyonce can, for example, sing better or perform mm. better. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying her career has been more successful mm. than than Kelly's, but Kelly is still a, an a, a talented songwriter. Yeah. Um, singer and now actor. I think she's actually has like some good um, acting skills. Yeah, I agree. I disagree Look. completely. <laughs> I thought it's like the whole role was like, is this dress up? Like, is are you more focused on like how good? Because the fashion... The looks were looking, but this, yeah, the looks there were was <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. I didn't even. Everyone was talking about the fashion. I didn't even notice the fashion. The fashion was. Ah, the fashion was oh, phenomenal. I, even you talked about. I was like the trench coats, the hair. Yes. I, I was like, I yeah. want to be a lawyer so I can dress Do like that. Right? Like, I was like, I was like wow, she looked incredible, but yeah. the acting. Oh, you didn't dear. think she was a good act performer? No, I really liked it. Oh, there's nothing I believe. Like Kelly Rowland did like a sexy like, mm-hmm. and then that guy, mm-hmm. the way he was mm-hmm. looking at her. First of all, the the the, the storyline. Seriously, this girl is like talking about murder. Then suddenly no, we are. Yeah, yeah. I would not fire when you. When they started stabbing each other, I, I, I was like, fire get you the hell because out. Because <laughs> you don't trust me. <laughs> oh yeah, and then and I was like, and then what, what was like, the, what was you the can't even that? admit that you the... you want me. <laughs> I was like, what are we doing? Yeah. Where are we? It was it was giving, terrible. It was no, giving... that it's terrible. It was but giving celebrity notes. movies are like that. Okay. Yeah, like Kelly, I, I, I no. don't know. I didn't go in expecting some. You yeah, know? like I, she's fabulous. She's amazing, but no, that acting was. Good. You don't think she mm. like? I, and I don't don't look, don't don't look at the the, the weak script. Look at her performance and how she embodied <laughs> the role of Mia Kalpa. <laughs> She was believable. If you put Beyonce there, okay, you know what? We're I think maybe you're Kelly comparing, here. yeah. From no, me. I'm not just comparing. Okay. Also, I feel what like she did it. She did I it did good. Not. The yeah, script I, might have let her down a little bit. I, the the, the, the storyline. Story line. The storyline. But when she she got onto that screen, like she owned it. Yeah. Like you know when, and I'm going to do the comparing thing again. But like, what's her name? Um, Lupita. Not Lupita. No, Lupita is a billionaire. Imagine if Lupita in Mia Culpa. Yeah, no, that's she's no Lupita, Lupita is a really a good actor. <laughs> she's What's exceptional. Her name? Who? Scandal. Kelly uh, Washington. Washington. Oh, so you see, really when nice. when Kelly walked on screen, it's like, whoa, okay, this is yes. a lawyer. I got the vibe. With Kerry Washington, I did get it, but there was a lot of moments where I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, no way. I feel like Kelly was so over exaggerated. I feel like we didn't lean that's into so her wild. being. Yeah, I, I feel like we didn't lean into her being mm. like really a lawyer. It's like it was just it just felt like she was just kept walking up and oh, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. I know. I, I get. She that. just looked okay, amazing. Yeah, it was like script, a, a fashion, a fashion that's film. The script, Lydia. <laughs> yeah, it it could have been a fashion film. film. But that's yeah. the script. That's not her. But acting even skills. even with her acting skills, like that. When the what's script it? where she's when just walking she realized, from here and then she walks up the stairs. Then they are on a motorbike. Then they are back in the bedroom. Then they are painting each other. Oh, and then they got into a red room. I don't know what the purpose of that was. When she Honestly. when she realized that she had had an affair and she had jumped on the father, she thought he was having an affair. Mm. There was nothing believable about that. Those emotions. <laughs> no, please. The, the scene on the lift when she was like, "Open the fucking elevator." I, mean, I was like, uh-uh. "Kelly, no. Kelly, girl, you guys, <laughs> Kelly, no. that Kelly the, did great." That was uh-uh. the only part I was like. That yeah. could have been done a bit better, but mm. everything else I liked it. Yeah. I loved the sex scene. The, I mean, the sex scene was the, I, was the really. Well. I definitely yeah. went it's in expecting we... more because it was really all over the TikTok. Even in the sex scene, I don't think but she looked like she was having the time was, that we were but having. But she's, <laughs> she's, she's, yeah. We were having a great time. Yeah, no, but was she? No. Okay, but the male actor. Let's for a minute. Ten out of ten. ten. <laughs> Her. I said, wow. I mean, if I was yeah. Kelly's Ooh. husband, Mm-mm. I don't think I'd be yeah. okay with her doing this film. I don't See, know. I think that, like, script, that script was 
his intensity was exaggerated. Like they yeah. made it, you guys are here talking about the guy. I'm just like, okay. No, like the, me for me is like I felt like he was a bit believable despite for the sure. script. For sure, he was but great. He, she was not believable. Now for me, it's oh, oh well, he was believable. I yeah, think he yeah. was. He's and, a good and, actor. And I could tell, especially even her her brother-in-law, yeah. her mother-in-law, yeah. her mm. husband. I didn't feel was a very strong actor, but her brother-in-law and the mother-in-law. Her brother-in-law, yes. The mother-in-law was over-exaggerated. Oh, I think she was. I think she was. The feud between her and Mia Kalpa, I was like, not the feud, guys. I'm saying, you're given a script. <laughs> Don't look at the storyline. Even I'm without, saying, see, we can see. See, we now, see. as she's acting, she really, the, the, the villain in her really came out. Like, she was believable as a character. Mm. To me, Kelly was also believable as a character. But that script was not... Idea. Yeah. Sharon, what caught your attention? Uh, what caught my attention was actually the episode you guys did on TMI, which mm. was you disrespect. I, I think it was titled "I Disrespect Money, Money When Red. I." So, <laughs> <laughs> like, same. Yeah. Just same. Just yeah. same. Like, guys, yeah. we need to. We need to get. Okay, I let me support myself. I need to get my financial literacy in order sweetheart and on and not even just my financial literacy but my my business and finance mm. literacy because one of the things that i think i why i struggle with being a content creator yeah. is because i still don't understand the the money or like right. monetizing and then how to put money back into the business right. how am i a business what kind of business am i am i a creative entrepreneur am i just an entrepreneur yeah. am i self employed like what 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 is this what am i doing yeah and I realized that my answer, the, I disrespect my money mm. to just go off the, the yeah. theme of that episode yeah. when I don't figure out how my creative, my creativity is making money for me. Mm. Yeah. Because that's what I feel Fact. like we are creative entrepreneurs, mm. but then because we are self-employed, we are personal brands, mm. it's so hard to identify the business of what we do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like when someone runs a business that is, I don't know, a fintech mm. or a whatever, like it's so clear what the business is. Yeah. But when it's a personal brand, mm. what is the business? Yeah. Like, and so, and then I started doing Syntonomy mm. Entrepreneur, by mm. the way, which I'm loving. I'm part of this, this, this month's, this cohort. Yeah. And one of the things they're teaching us is that you have to have a line item mm. in your P&L for you as the talent mm of the business right or for you as the person running the business mm -hmm. and i just never thought about it that way like so let's say the business is sharon mashira right mm -hmm. so i've got like i'm building a small team i've got you know someone who does my admin i've got a videographer blah 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 all these things but then i never thought to put a line item in there for what is paid to me right. as the talent like mm -hmm. as the person as now sharon mashira right and then there's a line item in there for Sharon, who's doing the admin of running all of this. Right. Like, these are two separate line items. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how have I never thought about this before? Like, right. in my mind, I just get paid for gigs, mm -hmm. and then I use that money to either just live my life or pay my right. team. Like, there was absolutely no structure. Yeah. And I realized I've really been disrespecting my money mm -hmm. by not having figured this out yeah. by now. Yeah. So, yeah, I just said, this year, moving <laughs> forward. This year, right? We're, we're, we're making this business make sense because the 100%. business of creativity is, I think, harder yeah. to structure yeah. than maybe another business. I mean, other people can say what mm -hmm. they think, but like, it really just dawned on me that it needs to be structured. Yeah. It can just, fine, you can do the creative and enjoy that, but then what is the structure behind the creativity? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. guys, I hear you. Listen. 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 Plus that episode, I was just yeah. like, we need to, like at 30 years old, girl, this is what I'm learning. No, I'm telling you. And it's, here's the thing. I feel like there's a culture of like finding it funny that we are not financially literate. Yeah. You know how we are, we it's not about, funny. Like, yeah, but we all we support laugh about each Galma. other. Yes. We're like, who Galma? We all support each other being this way. But actually <laughs> this year I was just like, mm. like, no, I'm done. Like, I, of, it's like, I have this checklist of like the woman I aspire to be that 10 out of 10 body. Yeah. There's a checklist. Financial literacy. Why is that blank? Right. Completely <laughs> blank. She must have you financial know? literacy. Yeah. No, I can't do that. It's e it was easy for me and Murugi to structure TMI as a business yeah. because I guess that's like a joint venture. Mm -hmm. But our own personal like, brand. Exactly. Yeah, it's like it's makeup. Like, what are your business expenses, ex girl? You know. When I started breaking that down, I was like, I'm like, are you spending, making money? So I'm not making money. Actually making I'm money. Actually not making because money because you're not structuring it right. Literally. Yeah. But this is the year, guys. No, not Get anymore. Get in, guys. No, 
not anymore. getting financially literate. Hundred percent. We were talking about this actually. We were. We yeah, were, yeah. We just we all need to get and into it. And actually, after that, um, I reached back out to. Uh, so the person who I do the personal finance mm-hmm. with, her yeah. name is Juliet Odiambo, mm-hmm. and uh, I know you've worked with her. Yeah, yeah. I did a live with her, mm-hmm. and so basically, last year I made a I made good money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then we love to hear it. Yeah, March came around this year. In March is when I was like, where, where did this money go? <laughs> we're done with that. <laughs> like we're done with that, babe. And that's why I was like, um, so I, I and you know, I told you I, I got stuck at the place where she told me you need to start um, tracking tracking mm. your expenses. And I said every day, <laughs> like uh, every day, babe. After we had our conversation, mm-hmm. I went home. I opened my laptop. I got the spreadsheet. I said March first, twenty twenty four. Let's do it. And I started going through all my whatevers mm. and I sent her a picture mm. and I told her, because my classes are pending. She yeah. said, we're not going to move forward until you track. That was wow. a year ago. Because that's the first place that so was that a you year can ago. know the track. And I'm like, I don't need to track. I know like generally what I said. You're supposed to track every single, everything. This is now to be, not forever, not forever, Damn. but for her to start. <laughs> yeah, not forever, but like yeah, for her to, 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 to track, track at least 30 days. Let's look at how you're spending your money. Yeah. Let's look at your spending habits. Da, da, da. It's like a prerequisite to start this, mm, okay. this thing. It's like yeah. she has a few courses. Um, they can go up to six months, but then depending on where you're at and what you're trying to achieve, you pick the modules you want. Yeah, but the right. one that you cannot miss is this one. And yeah. it starts with first you have to track. Yeah. Mm. In my mind, I was like, I know how much I pay for rent. I know how much I pay for mm. people. I know how much I pay for like general. Like. So I knew generally these are my expenses per month. But it's the small ones. Almost like 60, 60 seven, 30, 30 to, 30 to 40% fees. is just rubbish. Right. Yep. Doing this. Mindless Uber this. Spending. Outfit here. Makeup this. Somebody yeah, asked me for money, you ridiculous. know. So now when yeah. I put it down, I was like, guy, we've not even reached the mid-March mm-hmm. and I'm over 60, I was over, over 60% of that thing which I said I know you I had spent. said. <laughs> yeah. And we've not Can even you? done the, the, we have not even done the rent, the yeah. this, the that. So I was like, oh. It's like a diet. We need to see your God. true eating habits yes. first to see where the issues where the issue happen. Is. Yes. Yeah, so, cool. yeah. So this is me. So, this is me Yeah, now. so yeah. I, I had a chat with Lydia. Mm-hmm. But we're just talking about other stuff. Mm-hmm. I was like, this creative industry, mm-mm. But anyway, guys, I want us to get to the conversation. Yeah. Yes, oh my God. Which was this, is how, this is how every conversation at um, <laughs> our podcast begins. Yeah. <laughs> we call it, it's almost like breaking the ice, um, wetting the appetite. Yeah. yeah. So today's conversation, we said her name is Risa Tessa. Risa Tisa. Yeah. Risa Tisa. Tisa. Like Teresa. Teresa. <laughs> she had this, she has this, um, go check out her, her, her TikTok. If you yeah. guys want a reference to what we're talking about, but I'm pretty sure everybody has. By heard now. of, if yeah. at least heard of, if not watched, yeah. who yeah. the fuck did I marry? Long and short of it is, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, Risa, Tessa, Tessa, Risa, she met this guy off of a dating app, um, and they fell in love pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. A lot of red flags were missed. She married this guy, and then lockdown happened, and... Basically, her entire marriage with this guy was a lie. He lied about mm-hmm. everything, even creating characters that didn't exist. Sisters, siblings. Um, insane. Yeah, insane. Uh, he lied that he was here. This kind of job. Every day, 6 o'clock in the morning, he left for work. But he was not going. Mm. He was going to work, but then he was not working as job. like a forklifter at this, what you call a condiment company. Condiment company. company. Um, in, <laughs> in Atlanta. No, in Georgia. And... He, but he, he was, was saying he was original manager and then went to VP. Um, eventually, the math was not mathing, and yeah. she reached out to his ex-wife. Mm-hmm. She found the ex-wife through like public records, and the ex-wife. The first thing she said is, "If you're calling me, <laughs> that means that shit has really hit the fan." Yeah, and she's like, "Yeah, you know, he told me this. He told me this," and she cut her and said, "Listen, everything you're about to tell me, I'm telling you it's already, is a lie." Wow. Um, and then eventually, she takes us through the process of mm. divorcing mm. this man who she yeah. married. Mind you, she had not even told a lot of her family members that she was, the, the issues that were going on and, and the fact that she was married because a lot of this stuff was happening during lockdown. Mm-hmm. So I think if it was normal times, she'd have been able to like suss things out a little bit better. But because you're at home, you can't go and verify this person who lives here or this mm. relative he's talking about or this job across the street. You know, she was working from home, he was not. Yeah. Um, and and I really want us to talk about it in in, in terms of the themes mm. that are jumping out out of this story. One of the things that Tessa said 
Tisa Tessa. Is it Tessa? Tisa. Tisa. Tisa Tisa. Like number nine. No, Tisa. it's Tessa. Okay, say Tisa, Tessa. Tisa. It's okay. For purposes of this okay, recording. Tisa? Okay. Risa Tisa. <laughs> Me, I thought she was even Risa Tessa. And some people are some people are saying Risa Tessa, but when she says herself, she says Risa, Risa Tisa. Risa Tisa. Yeah. Okay. Tisa. Mm-hmm. So according to Risa Tisa, <laughs> she she said. One of the things that jumped out to me, like at the end, she was like, okay, fine. One of the, she, and she says, she's like, I know I missed a lot of the flags. Mm-hmm. I know you're not going to talk <laughs> a shit. A lot of the flags. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't even think there were as many as she was making it out to be. I, 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 I mean, I really understand yeah. somebody's um, psychology when you're in that space. But she said one of the things that for her she thinks allowed this thing to happen, as long as it did is because she had a very strong desire to get married. Yeah. And so when she met this person who at face value mm. was ticking all the boxes, ticking all the boxes, ticking all the boxes. By the time I think you start to see the lies, they such a you have such a high sense of denial. Yeah. Um and so I want us to talk about especially being three women non-married. I'm not going to say single. I know people have their own things going on. <laughs> okay? Wow. But on paper, <laughs> on paper, you're single. Yeah. You're not married. You don't have any kids. Yeah. Um, the pressure to get married um, and how it informs the decisions you make yeah. in the people you keep around you, mm-hmm. more so keep in your bed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I want <laughs> us to touch a little bit on, does, do we have, do we feel that pressure or how yeah. has, that, has that pressure evolved over time? Mm-hmm. Um, but I want us to start from the point of what informed our ideas about love and marriage. Yeah. If you can mm. touch on that, like growing up, growing up, it could, I don't yeah. know. If you want to go first, Lydia, um, for me, I guess because my parents were separated, mm. I had a very different view of mm. marriage. For me, has never been about just getting married, it's always been like about marrying the right person Ooh. because I know that what if you marry the wrong person, yeah. the consequences are severe, Mm -hmm. severe. So what has always been a concern to me is am I marrying the right person more than just the getting married yeah. for sure. So my, the, 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 I guess that one for me is what balances the societal pressure, which mm. is a hundred percent there. It's so because much. that that societal pressure is balanced by this view of okay, maybe you guys, your parents are still together, so just getting to be with someone is all you're thinking about. Whereas mm. me having mm-hmm. suffered the consequences of coming from a divorced family, my parents divorced like 1999. I was I'm the OG divorced kid <laughs> as a 90s kid um yeah. so i i know what the consequences are so i feel like my my views are those two cons um, like they they work hand in hand so it's like my show show every time i go like my show show on my dad's side she's mm-hmm. always like oh you know when is somebody coming blah 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 mm-hmm. that's there there's like my uncles and my aunties and everything is just being said in jest but it's like this is still For being real. said it's a serious consistently joke. Right. all of the time when i come here <laughs> yeah. so it's i mean even if it's just a joke or it's just being said lightly i can see that it's there um yeah that's there for sure versus this like yo when i so i when i get in this <laughs> this is this is for life Forever, this is the person who i'm deciding is going to be the father of my children mm. there is a very strong sense of this is serious that i feel so i feel like those two are balanced somehow pressure from my parents has never existed it's not there in fact my mom said that one of the things that she wishes for her children is that they they wait longer to decide who they marry because she's like, had she waited with my dad, she would not have married him. Okay. So she's and she encourages, like, okay, are you sure? Have you thought about this? It, you know, she's more on that side are than you the, the firstborn. I am the firstborn. Okay. Yeah. Um. So she she's more on that side. My dad really doesn't even say anything around this. She's just kind of like. He's like, when you're happy or when you decide yeah, that's it. whenever, mm. because they're divorced. So mine, I guess, is a bit different, different yeah. but the pressure is definitely there, my good friend. Right. Is Everywhere. Your, is your pressure external or is it also a bit Ah, good yourself? question. For yeah. me, the, there's like and the pressure, pressure which I hear. What does pressure look like? For mm. me, How does it manifest? Mine, for me, is just about more about the kids. Okay. It's more on the kid's perspective for me as far as marriage, more than like it's time to find someone. It's more like you want children. So yeah, I'm 33 years now. old. I just turned 33. Your so Jesus, like, yeah. Yes, it oh is. I'm obsessed, Love by the that. way. Like Love the Jesus that. thing is like Love that. everything. 
I'm obsessed. I can't um, wait to be 33. Like, because yeah. I want to be in my Jesus. Oh yeah. my God, yeah. I am obsessed. It's, yeah. it's so far so wonderful. So for me, the pressure yeah. is more like I do want children, mm. and it's like there's just limitations in your body. And I guess what people say is true as far as that biological clock is just so like pushed too hard but there's realities to it like don't don't be deceived there's realities to what your body is able to do what the right. numbers say what the statistics are so for me that's what I think about most and am I getting married so that I can have children <laughs> or is marriage for me more about children yeah. yes it is interesting yes. I get that. other perspective I didn't even that's think about. that's for me it's mostly that to be honest if I didn't want children I would not even I would not even care less about marriage yeah So uh, and, and uh, I um so for you like what happens let's say mm. let me paint a scenario for you mm. imagine you're 38 years mm. old you meet somebody mm. but they don't meet all your criteria yeah actually in a sense if you go ahead with him mm-hmm. you would be settling mm-hmm. a little bit yeah let's let's call it settling actually yeah mm. but he's there yeah he is a good human being but yeah. maybe he doesn't have <laughs> those things yeah. Um, I actually, actually, let's even call it 39.5. Yeah. Let me even say, would I you, said... Would you settle if you put your, find yourself in a corner? And for you, you see your thing is kids. Yeah. So for you, the main thing for you is your biological mm-hmm. clock, which mm-hmm. you have no control over. Yeah. Another thing you don't have control over is when you're going to meet this person. Yeah. Mm. Let me tell you. So um, I say, like, all of my intentionality about being single and everything, I literally just got back to intentionally dating, like, two months ago. Um, So <laughs> it's like, I, I can't exactly say I have that, like... You know, it's like it's getting tiring or anything. It's like I'm actually in the joy of it. But I said, call me at 38 and ask me that question again. What's your cutoff? <laughs> What's your, oh my God. What's your... Yeah, Red, panic, no, for panic sure. Here. 35, we're losing it. Babe, I'm 36. Yeah, for 35? sure. Yeah, for sure. That's so early. You think? No. Really no, we are, no, are no, screaming like bloody 35, murder. 35. We are screaming <laughs> and you're bloody murder. So maybe you have a year. Yeah. Because uh. you need a year to... This, this yeah, is your year. No, as in a year without meeting someone. This like, you know, year. 35. This is your year mm. to meet somebody. <laughs> yeah. And then you use the year. Not 35 necessarily for kids. 35 that you haven't met anyone. Like, I haven't met the person who I want. Mm. Yeah. We are screaming bloody murder. <laughs> for sure, it's like, guys, no, let, let's get serious. That's yeah. soon, huh? Yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah, for me, it's like, that's going to be... Because But once you happen. have... Look, look, look at you. you. Look at you, man. Girl. Girl. Um, once we have... Listen, um, internet, guys. Once you... <laughs> like, if your first pregnancy is after 35, mm. it's like, there's like more complications. Like, especially if it's your first one. So that's it's like, true. that's what I that, that's what I think about. So yeah, if we're 35, yeah. we don't... have the person hmm. okay guys yeah well so yeah so i yeah. i do i completely <laughs> empathize yeah i empathize deeply with like with, you know you been Tisa. like I, i saw this girl who was like she was single for like she's been single for like seven years she's like craving oh, to wow. be with someone mm. yes she loves herself yes her life is full yes you know she's got all the things that we say yeah. that you're supposed to be oh looking God, for she's in girl. therapy yeah yes 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 um yeah yeah I think yeah I and you know, so it's like i get I it online. She's, the... like, she, she's like i've done the work i've done yeah. this i i i i she was like i don't even have the kind she has she has a career and everything mm, she but she has what she's supposed I remember to she have said, i don't even i have i have money i can take care of myself mm. but i don't have the kind of money that in the way the men look at it sorry like it's too much at it's yeah. too much it's, i don't even have the, <laughs> she's like i don't even have the kind of money that would intimidate a man mm. but i can take care of myself yeah and if i have a baby i can take care of a baby but she was like i, I just haven't yeah. i have anybody. friends i that's, have a full life that, yes she saying she has friends but she was like it's so sad i don't know if it's the same woman i'm pretty sure it is and she was saying but then she was saying but it's just a sadness Mm. that she can't shake off because she hasn't she, she hasn't doesn't have romantic love, love. In seven years in seven years and i was like wow 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 you see in a situation like that same. and then you meet you meet yeah, uh, what was his name legion, legion. legion. And then he does one act so of service I get it. which was fixing the car yeah, yeah. of course you'll be intoxicated no i not 100% the red get it i empathize i do not blame women who decide that you know what yeah. it's better than nothing i don't blame at all it's just i i i want us it's like We can't keep blaming women for how they're reacting to the mm. pressure cooker we're putting them in. We exactly. need to just stop, yeah, right? However, it's yeah. like we have to be conscious of trying to change the narrative. Like that that's just all we can do, you know? But yeah, if at 38 it's like I don't have kids. Yeah. I haven't met my person. Yeah. Am I still going to be so headstrong about mm. my standards? I don't know. I May I never you... find out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're 36. Mm-hmm. What is what is what are the things that mm. you're willing to be like okay maybe he doesn't have to compromise. be compromise so, 
rich. Yeah. He doesn't have to be so tall. Yeah. He doesn't have to be like what are the things you're willing to let go of that's on your checklist currently? Let's even talk about now. Yeah, um, talk about now. What has for changed? me? Um, for me, your... for me, it's like these core values that I'm not willing to compromise on yeah. because I feel like they affect too much. Mm. And when I think about the decision of this person being the father of my kids, yeah. I kind of can't be reckless enough to say that this is good enough for my kids when I can see it's no. You know, there's the people who shock you. Mm. That I didn't know you weren't, you are were this person. Yeah. Like, let it surprise me. But I'm consciously going into someone who I know lacks empathy, mm. is emotionally mm. unavailable. Mm. It, it, it's like, I am choosing this for yeah. the person who's going to father my kids. So there are some things I'm just not willing to compromise on. And maybe it's not in the stars for me to have kids mm. if every person I'm aligning with is obvious that they're going to be right. like, not somebody great for my kids. That's I have to maybe yeah. work on that radical acceptance. Damn. If it's that that's extreme, that's radical, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this, the, the core values is like now being empathetic, um, being somebody who's open, being mm. a loving person, somebody who's aware of themselves, somebody who has, who takes accountability. There are some things I just, it would be really, it would be a massive disservice and a betrayal to myself to be compromising on those. Mm -hmm. But now things like, I want somebody who comes from like a really close-knit family. Like I really want yeah. that. Have yeah. I actually ever dated anyone? No, mm. not really. It's like, you know, there are some things which is just like, this is not really on you. Yeah. Um, or something else I was saying is like, it's not my desire to be with somebody who has a child, but then the dynamic, if like they have a healthy dynamic, it's clear that that's separate. Yeah. Could you? And I'll tell you, in your you see, 30s, the older mm, you get, mm. a lot of the people you meet already have mm -hmm. Yeah, already yeah. have children. The goods, the goods, men. I don't know if it's just a thing of where they were snatched up when they were very young because they were mm. the good guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're more likely. More likely. Older. I'll tell you for Even sure. Even women. Girl, I'm 36. I can, yeah. I can tell you for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I want to ask Sharon, what do you yeah. think informed your ideas mm. about marriage? Um, you've talked about marriage, but I also want you to lean in a little bit in Ma what informed your ideas yeah. about romance right. and love. Mm. So I would say, be, ma I would, I'll speak on marriage because mm. I, I feel like my mom, like my parents are, are married, they're still together. Mm -hmm. And you know how we, we normally model and ape after our parents. Right. And I feel like what I've seen with my mom is she's such a model mom and wife. Mm -hmm. Like she's the, what's that? The Proverbs woman. Yeah. Ooh, you know, nice. like the Proverbs woman is the woman who, like, I can't remember how they describe her. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll check. But it's more like she's, she has dignity. Yeah. She is, you know, like he who finds a, 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 Christ, a Christian, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yeah. Like that's the kind of person that mm. my mom is. And so I feel like my whole life I've grown up thinking that that is who gets married. That oh, is who okay. is chosen. That is who finds a husband. And so I've always felt like, because I, I don't really identify with like the Proverbs woman just yet. Yeah. You know, we're working on it. And Why? so I've always felt like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I was just a bit of a rebel. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I just wanted to be out here having fun. Okay. And so I've always felt like when I get married, it will be, it will be because me as Sharon, I am settling into my Proverbs woman era. And I'm sort of, you know, I'm settling down. Like I'm putting, I'd, I'd be the girl who puts maybe her career to a pause a little bit to take care of the kids. And so I've always thought maybe at the point that I get married, I want to be, like I'll, I'll be that type of woman, right? And so because I don't feel like I'm that woman yet. I'm like for now, I, I, I don't feel like I want to be married just yet until I transition into being a little bit more like my mother. Really? Yes, who That's is so more like wifey. Yeah, she's a career woman, yes, yeah. but like, if, I'm sure if my mom had to drop her career for her kids, in a she heartbeat, in a heartbeat, you know, and she takes care of my dad and like, like that's who she is, but I feel like I'm not yet there. I definitely do see myself being that kind of woman because that's how, who raised me, but for now I'm just like, maybe when I get to 35, right. you know, to the right man, right. to the right person, yeah. like I'll submit to him, mm. but for now I'm just like, not yet, I'm still you know, enjoying the throes and spoils of being single. By single, I mean not married. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think my view of love and marriage is inspired by my mom and this idea of being the Proverbs woman and, and that kind of thing. I like that. That's I wonder if there's a Proverbs man. Is there, look, I want to go <laughs> no, there. There, there isn't. There isn't. Just we would have heard about it. There isn't. Let me even because check with what that all Proverbs. This, uh, this, you know, women are told they, you have to, to get this, you should be this. But I'm oh, wondering yeah. if the Bible also uh -huh. models for that. us as women the kind of man that we should be on the lookout for yeah. rather than us changing but whoever right. comes right that's a good point you know, we are, we are, it's like we are being trained to 
we are the ones who are prepared. We are the ones prepared. who are yeah, preparing for marriage. Uh, well, men are just they are looking for money. So I mean, I, I, here's the proverbs, yeah. woman, guys. Mm-hmm. She is clothed with strength and dignity. Mm-hmm. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Many women do noble things, but you, as the proverbs woman, surpasses them all. Okay. Must be nice. Yeah. Must be nice. Must be so nice. And you yeah. feel you're so far from that. No, 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 no. I'm very oh. close. Oh, okay. I'm very close. Oh, where, right. where it's just that I know that I need to apply more of myself to be that person. Right. Okay. And I'm willing to get there, but yeah. you know, just as we're still Now working on it. Now let's be vibes. Let's just be okay. vibes and. Fair enough. Yeah. We're, we're working towards it. Okay. <laughs> I, um, what informed me? Obviously, my mom and dad. Mm. That's standard. Mm. You look at mom and dad. You're like, oh, this is what marriage looks like. Mm. And looking at other people other families cousins yeah. neighbors mm. yeah. um however to be honest what really really defined to me that this is what i want mm. was what i was seeing on television right. um and what i because that's you know it was it was, yeah, it was filled with so much enchantment yes. and, and romanticism and also the also the books i was reading before that's what informed my ideas about love and relationships and then an age you come to an age for me it was like at least at like 31 32 there mm-hmm. where that disillusion you become disillusioned like you you realize oh, okay so that wasn't what i've been looking for is not what i'm supposed to be looking for right mm-hmm. i was looking to be swept off my feet and mm-hmm. um, to be completely intoxicated by this romance yeah. um and it's like i was almost like if it doesn't feel like that then that's not love mm. but then yeah it had to change it had to change it had to change like it just changed on its own in a way mm. almost because of like oh okay so this is not it this is not it this is not it mm. um yeah that's what informed and i think that's what a lot of women look for i think i'm not sure yeah, yeah. but i think a lot of sure. women look for this kind of idealistic roma- mm. romance that's going to lead to the to marriage that, yeah. and the children yeah. 100%. and nowadays i don't think it has to be that way um especially because i was i started to read a lot about arranged marriages right. and their success rates yeah. in comparison to love marriages yeah when these two people meet they have not fallen in love and you know taken yeah. a walk on the beach and writ- written each other love letters they are put set up together by their families and this is from generations mm, of mm-hmm. a system that has already be, has worked so by the time somebody is coming to set you up they kind of know what is done and mentally i think as a child you grow up seeing it yeah the, there is yeah. cultural bias with why they are successful for sure exactly yeah um and now when you get into a marriage you choose mm. to love this person so yeah. then I, i remember that buster bubble for me mm. i was like oh my god so love is i know it sounds like a broken record but love is not a feeling it's actually a decision yeah. that you make mm-hmm. um and then you know so so that's just like where i'm at in terms right. in terms of that yeah. but to your to to the question i asked you about being like would you settle yeah I like what's the also, panic yeah. Yeah. i don't also want you to add that yeah. yeah. you know what mm. damn you know what mm. you know what because for me mine was not kids Okay, fair my enough. driving force has never been children. Yeah. But now I'm like shit, should it be because oh, I'm 36. Mm, <laughs> right. And <laughs> my goal this year mm. is to make to make money, enough money to be able to freeze my eggs. Yeah. Um I know adoption is a cho- uh, an option, but yeah. I would if I'm having a child would want to have a child of my own. Yeah. A little mini me. <laughs> um because I don't have the luxury to be like, hey, I like you, mm. let's do this. Yeah. So so to answer the question, mm-hmm. yes, I now I would I would get into a a relationship that is not romantically inclined. Oh yeah. Mm. But I see there is a high compatibility mm. in terms of we want the same thing. Yeah. We're looking at the world in the same way. I don't ha- and you know, I would it may not even have to be married. It's yeah. almost like you will be the father of my children. Okay. Mm. Mm. Probably never said this publicly, mm. but yeah, I would I would get into an arrangement where I'm like this is a person who I feel is a good person maybe maybe not somebody I would be romantically attracted to mm. because already my romantic blueprint is flawed right okay do you understand mm-hmm. and it's very hard to change that because yeah. it's that thing was locked into my subconscious yeah. as, mm, at a very a young kid. age yeah but if now I'm able to, because I'm able to identify 
this is what a good partner looks like and they want to be the father of my ch- somebody who wants kids will you be in the relationship or is just like their dad but like you're your not co-parenting. together we can decide on that oh, i will okay. be open to being in a relationship yeah, if yeah. i see that it's possible uh-huh. and i would be open to not being in a relationship mm. but you are the father of my children yeah. i've talked about this to other men older men who just to get the, yeah. yeah opinion <laughs> and let me tell you two of my good homies mm. men um Are late down. 30s early 40s. no they are like there is no way oh yeah i'm going to impregnate you mm. and you're not my wife oh why and that shocks me because mm. left right and center men don't that's want they, the responsibility that's what they're doing of, anyway right yeah so i'm like Why? It's, it's almost like, like they don't want to spend quality of money though. My, yeah. I, yeah. My, and these are educated work right. whatever That's you want to call. And and yeah. they're like no 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 it's just not possible. And I and I said so even if like if we were to get into an arrangement you wouldn't not I was asking them mm. I was giving them hypothet- yeah. hypothetically. If I told you listen let's do this thing. And they'd be like no. Absolutely not. It goes against everything. And I'm like mm. okay. So <laughs> there's actually a friend of mine who I, feel, I was saying now like there's an episode we did about this um about single and dating on TMI and I was saying that there's a friend of mine um who I know is like okay this this would be the one. Yeah. And Morugi does not believe I would ever be able to do that. She's probably think, accurate. Yeah. yeah I like know. I girl. say I, I feel like you'd fall in love with him. I say that yes, yeah. I would just do it but mm, would I? Yeah. I don't know. Would yeah. you do a sperm donor? I would I would do us. I would 100% okay. do a sperm donor right. because now I don't have you see you are 33. Yeah. I am at the 36 babe. Yeah. And let me tell you those things you'd be like no 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 I can't or you're just like not it's not for me. Yeah. You start thinking what is it that I really want? Mm. Yeah. Legacy. Somebody to, to take almost to, to heal myself through this child. Yeah. Yeah. Like Damn. my childhood was like this and I didn't like this but maybe I can do this yeah. differently with this person those are the those are the motivators for me yeah and and yes i would do a spam donor to answer your question mm. yeah. right now if you ask me this question Back at 29 30 exactly. and i'd be like yeah. the things they change th- th- yeah so sure. things so, so things things do change i would do it in fact if i could get a spam donor that will get and carry i'm saying things i've never said in public <laughs> these are things that i read in my journal <laughs> But if I could do a sperm donor who can guarantee me twins, a boy and a girl, ah! yeah. we finish that story. That's yeah. it. And it can be done. Yeah. Guys, you no, become me, for my child uh, one year birthday. I don't judge so you, you for me be... someone without without yeah. a partner, without a father though. Yes, which is what I was going to ask. Like you, so you that's, me, that's 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 yeah. that thing is in so necessary, is, right? So, listen, here's mm-hmm. the thing. And I have heard what you've said, so let mm. me respond to that. Mm. I want my child to have their father in their life. 150%. I see. Yeah. I have my dad in my life. Mm. He's still there. My mom and dad are still married, mm. you know. Um and I've watched and read too many things where like maybe adopted kids or the sperm donor situation where the kids get one age especially during adulthood, I mean teenagehood yeah. when they're still trying to define themselves mm. and they're now getting an identity of who they are in versus mm-hmm. the world. Mm. They start to ask, "Hmm, how comes I don't walk?" like mom or how comes my yeah. fingers don't look like this yeah. <laughs> i know i am my father's child because we have the same toes yeah. we have the same smile mm. we have the same kind of the same way we look at the world and that gives me a huge comfort so i don't want to take away that from the child now if i get a spam donor mm. who is open to be in the child's life <laughs> okay yeah if they want to marry me fine but right. if they're like i don't want to get married okay. i'll give you a baby and we can create a relationship with this child so they right. have that balance mm. i'm open to that yeah but okay. if something happens sharon and i'm pregnant right now yeah and i don't have a fa- and the baby daddy is not yeah. here maybe he was just yeah. a sabani he went raise the kid my friend yeah. i'll do it yeah yeah i feel like honestly really judging get that. people I get like that. Yeah, it gets, I know the comments will be wild. You guys come for me, I'll come back for you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I They feel like will. Kenyans like, are so conservative, babe. But here's the thing, yeah, it's like if you lack um empathy or open-mindedness to appreciate that people's decisions change exactly. over, time over time based on like yeah, the yeah, pressure, yeah. the temperature of of their life. Yeah. It's like I feel like that's a that's a thing that you're struggling with. But the truth is me, like I judge no one. Like now mm. it's like you're 39, you're Who am Do I to thing? judge you? Mm. Yeah, and you see now even the pressure, that's the thing. I don't want to put the pressure that the excuse me, that this relationship has to be mm. perfect like like, mm. like I have to put pressure. I don't that pressure of I have to be in love and he has to be so good or so he has to be those things have to be ticked, but like he has to be this 
yeah, multi-millionaire charming, and yeah. you know what I mean? Six, six, six. No, now yeah. it's just like, what is it I really, really want? Like, yeah. peel off all these the other The non-negotiable. Mm. Yes, what yeah. is it that I really want? A, a good person who has comes um, from a good family, I'd like that mm-hmm. because I don't want those traumas transferred into mm-hmm. my child. I really think it's somewhere in the genetic code of your gametes, mm-hmm. which are your egg <laughs> and your sperm. Mm-hmm. You know, it would be good if there, there's no addiction in the family, you know, right. da, 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 that kind of thing. Fine. Other than that, where I'm at right now, mm. I'm able to take care of myself and I'm able to take care of this child. And it gets to a point where the clock is ticking, baby. Sometimes yeah. you have to take up lunch. And you know, my mom sent me a text the other day mm. talking about pressure. Me, I've never had pressure. Yeah. Oh my God, you should. <laughs> never. My mom has never pressured me. Yeah. My dad has never pressured me. Yeah. I've never been asked, now. Nah, me, mm. I hear these things. I say, hey, Polendi, guys. Yeah. As we are cool. Over mm. here is kosher. <laughs> yeah. Until... I went, this is like, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, so recent. We went for an event. We went for Miss Karun's um, concert. Concert, because when I saw she's performing, I was like, Sharon, we gotta go. Let's go. So we went. And then I was, me and my mom were talking the whole day. So we talked, we sent each other pictures, like, all the time. So I'm telling her, yeah, we are here. This is how the place looks. She said, wow, it's so nice. Da, da, da. And then at some point, I sent her a video of Karen, because uh, at the, uh, when Karen was closing her set, mm. Her son was crying somewhere off stage. And so I think she just told him, come on stage. So she was carrying her son as she was finishing her last song. Mm. It was such a beautiful moment. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, I have to say this to my mom. I said, I said, mom, that's the musician. That's the son she's holding. I thought she'd be like, wow, these young people are so cool, whatever. Because yeah. she's always so fascinated by young people. Mm. Then she just said, Sarah, please get a baby. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's the message I was, never had pressure, Lydia. And, and I tell you, I just, just started out of the blue. Day, I just, I just, nope. showed, I shared the, the message. I showed, I showed D. I was with Edith, Edith. and I'm like, what the hell? So now Literally. that already that did something in my mind, mm. and I'm like, it's not a joke because my mom didn't pressure me. Because you know they get an age for grandparenthood. She already has a grandchild. One. One. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they but, but I think too. for me, she's just worrying. She's like, mm. babe, you know, it'll get to a point your knees are not gonna work the same way. You can't turn yeah. around. Yeah. Chasing this kid, so yeah, there's an age yeah. element which is like unfortunate for us women for sure. Mm. Um, but it, it's something to be aware of. But I feel like devastation and like choosing misery just feels like such a betrayal to myself. 100%. So I hope that um, I align with somebody who it doesn't have to be this horrible compromise, you know. Yeah. You can only pray, but yeah, maybe people can tell us. You guys are now on YouTube. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Oh. Tell us, you know, like if you are like, especially let's say over 35, what's the landscape if you are single? What are you thinking mm, about? Yeah. Because maybe we can come for each other. Yeah, I think I'd also, I'd also like to know if there's things that maybe when you were younger, they, mm. you were, they were like, this, I can never compromise on this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because things change. Eh? Yeah. You, maybe when you were young, you'd be like, I can never date a fat guy. Mm. I can't date a guy who doesn't have mm-hmm. this kind of job. Now, it's the like, fat guy who <laughs> you are ignoring. God. And but the guy in the friend zone. The guy in the friend zone. Especially those are the... Especially the ones in the friend zone. Because mm-hmm. for me, I was attracted to bad boys. <laughs> Why are you boys. smiling like that? I was attracted Who's to bad boys. Who's in your friend zone? Who's in your, your friend zone? zone. Your friend zone. Lydia looked at me when... Oh, <laughs> Yeah, um, mm. I, I, used to, I used to hear this thing where they say, you know, good guys finish last, da da da. And I used to be like, mm-hmm. I, I never thought I would be the babe who would let, I was that babe, let me just say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I would pass these men who became my friends because I was not, genuinely, I was no attraction. Right. But that's because I was attracted to emotionally mm. unavailable people because of my attachment style, which I had no control over. Right. Okay, so I forgive myself for that. Yeah. I had no control over the attachment style I have. I have no control. I had. You weren't no, aware, yeah. I wasn't aware. I had no control over who I was attracted to because I did not know the, that there's a dysfunction here mm. that I am mm. trying to repeat from my childhood mm. or whatever, you know, yeah. and, and, and to heal. Mm. But now that I know, the people who... I'm still attracted to those... Like, what happens... I don't know if your attachment cell... Because you know your attachment cell. Mm. For now, like when I was young, I'd be attracted to a certain type. And now when I'm, I I see what I used to be attracted to, I'll be mm. like, ah, I remember why mm. this used to appeal to me. Yeah. But now I'm like, Mm-mm. messy, oh, messy, messy. Sure. Mm. So that evolution has happened, but that's because yeah. I actually did the work. Oof, yeah, and that, that work was sense. painful yeah. and shameful in a way because mm. you're like, I can't unpack. believe. And almost sad. Yeah. Like you yeah. feel sad for that girl who was walking into that house, yeah. in that bed. And, you know, I, I just that. feel sad when yeah. I remember, I'm like, guy, Aki, like, poor me, mm. you know. Mm. Um, but it's, I feel like for me, the, the, 
just hearing both of you talking about the pressure or where the pressure is coming from or what it's tied to, yeah. I feel like I <laughs> shouldn't be admitting this. Yeah. I I think I romanticize the 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 husband or having the partner, maybe not the kids so much, yeah. but the the guy. Like who who will it be? Like I find myself just thinking like how how will I know it's him? I do too. Like yeah. I just I that's that and I don't know if it's like a childhood thing or watching this my fairy tale, or whatever. Yeah. But I definitely romanticize that a lot. Yeah. So much so maybe to a fault. So I'm like in a new relationship. Mm -hmm. Very, very new. And Okay, I'm, well, YouTube official. <laughs> She's in a new relationship. Stop <laughs> your mumbling. You're just running through that. And mm. I feel like, I don't know if it's... You're in the honeymoon fucking so phase. So deep in the honeymoon phase. She's not on earth. I'm like, you're where not, am yeah. I? What you're is this? Here. She's like, oh my God, today's such a good day, Jules. <laughs> <laughs> this is how she came to me. She's like, today's such a good day. I mean, I'm such so a good happy. I was like, babe, yeah. you're in like, love. And, you know, I feel like, I don't know if it's because like the... Maybe it's the honeymoon phase. Who knows? But... I just find myself really thinking about marriage, right? Oh my mm. God, I hope when he watches this, mm. anyway, cuts out of the bag. But I just feel like I find myself thinking about marriage. And I don't know if it's because I'm now 30 mm. and at the age where like a lot of my friends are getting married, mm. getting engaged and that kind of thing. But this was never my first thought at the beginning of a relationship. Like I've right. been in relationships before. I start, I tend to think about marriage maybe like two, three years in. That's yeah. when I'm like, eh, okay. Mm. Could this be my husband? Yeah. Never at the beginning. And I wonder, is it as a result of the person that I'm with right now? Because he's amazing. Mm. And, you know, like we're, we're having a good time. Mm. Or is it because I'm 30 and like this is what everyone around me is doing? Mm. Or am I just so keen to find this forever person? Yeah. So that's where I feel or like... Or all of I think all it is all. Above. Yeah. So that's where for me the pressure to get married comes from. Okay. Because of all these, right now at least. But I've definitely found myself... I think the pressure is... I would say internal. Mm. And it's, it's not really pressure. I think it's, des it's a desire. It is a desire. Now it's a desire. It's like I think a the time. Exactly. Mm. I'm like, you know, before marriage, and that's why, you know, back to the Proverbs woman thing, mm -hmm. like I would feel like marriage, there was pressure because I was like, now I have to be this perfect right. woman. And I'm not ready to be perfect mm. because I want to, I want to choose my career first because yeah. now, Contrary to being a Proverbs woman, it mm. seems like you must choose your husband over your career. And this mm. could be wrong. Like, that could be a misconception. Definitely. There we yeah. go. But so, whereas now, I'm like so much more open in my heart to settle down in that way, to, to, be, to be that woman, to be the Proverbs woman, and to be a mother. But like the part, my, I romanticize the, like, of course, my current partner, but like our partner, so much more now that I'm in my 30s yeah. than I did before. Like before, I was like, I wanna, mm. I wanna like win in my career. Like mm. fuck these niggas, like it's yeah. fine. But like now, I'm like, no, I want a good husband. Yeah. I want a good partner. Mm. Almost, it's almost primary yeah. to my need and desire yeah. to be a career woman. And like Jules, you know, like mm. I'm, I am a career girl through and through. Yeah. But for I don't know what's changed. Mm. Maybe also what I went through last year with losing my job and realizing like there are other more important things in this right. life than just, you know, your productivity mm -hmm. and how much money you're making. But I'm definitely feeling a strong desire to like settle down. Yeah. Mm. And I don't know where the hell this thing came from. Yeah. And I guess also maybe you're now getting And in love. And as you're yeah. saying, this person who you're with, like it, yeah, it makes it sense. It could be all these Because factors. you know when you're like 21, the the time to get married seems so it's so, far. babe, at exactly. 21 I was like, this marriage but is for old now, people. It's like the story is closer to right. that. So it makes sense. That so close. Yeah, it so makes yeah. sense. That's where I'm Basking at. it, sweetheart. I'm Basking swimming. It. Swimming in it. Yeah. Because, you know, I... I just, I forgot how nice this part of a yeah. relationship is when yeah. it's just at the beginning mm. and everything is so like amazing, beautiful. You see that career and marriage thing. Ugh. I've never seen those two things to be at par really? ever. And I guess it's because I saw my mom mm. having been someone who was working and in a marriage. In a, really? Those two things have never, even when people say it's like. They're not mutually exclusive. Uh, yeah. Really? The way people say like, oh, you know me, I was focusing on my career. I was like, no. You can do I've both. I've never had even in my mind, that oh, this is not the right time for a boyfriend. No. <laughs> or they Any never, time is the right yeah. time. Any time. The right time. Brother, brother friend. Right yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking about marriage from the first guy I, I never thought no. had sex with. Like, really? the first, yeah, the first mm. boyfriend. A first um, sexually mm. romantic man. You're thinking about marriage. Yes. 
Yes, mm. I was what, 19 uh, when I broke my virginity and we were together for three years. It was a very toxic relationship, but that's what came to mind because mm. I was previously saving myself for marriage. Oh, so to wow. me, like that was for my husband. Right. Then I changed my mind. I told God, listen, give me two years. <laughs> Uh, all my friends were having sex and they looked like they were having the time of their life. <laughs> and I wanted to do what was happening on the television in my bedroom. So I called the guy, we planned it out, got the condoms, everything. Like yeah. my friend was even at the, her house was at the entrance of the estate. So she's like, Meshuka Mat. <laughs> like he's, he's alighted from the Matatu. He came, those are the days we used to do in campus. Came to the house and we did the thing. Kai. I hope my mom is not watching, but yeah. yeah. So for me, I, 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 marriage, has always, marriage has always been in the cards. Never, It's not the kids. It's not just, kids. I'm like Sharon in the yeah. sense of I was, I couldn't wait to do life with this person, mm -hmm. to travel, yeah. to make money, to do yeah. this, and then the babies. Um, but it was uh, like career, for me, the top was finding a good partner, mm -hmm. finding a good job, mm -hmm. which has to be aligned with my, my purpose, and then the kids. Right. But right. then life... Mm -hmm. Give me a different script. Yeah, that's the thing. And so you have mm. to fucking adjust. And that's where the tough thing is. And that's what happens. And that's why you have people who settle yeah. um, and create fabrications in their minds and end up with people like Lee John. Yeah. Mm. And I think the situation with Lee John and T Tisa, Risa Tisa, could have happened to anybody. Of it's, course. First of all, it's happening. It is happening. Yeah. To, so to so many people. Maybe, but maybe not to that extent. extent. No, it yeah. can even happen to you or you or yeah. me. Yeah. You who is even you mm. in all your awareness. Yeah. You know, sometimes For sure. life mm -hmm. can just give you the right combination of elements. elements yeah. Yeah. For you to, you lose your North Kidogo mm -hmm. and then somebody just enters. Yeah. You're opportunistic. And, yeah. and, and not everyone comes presenting look at this situation like she, you could see this woman she's very aware, That's aware the thing, and yeah. but look pandemic yeah she's of age da, 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 like those all these circumstances mm. now if i imagine myself having not been with somebody having like craving physical intimacy or mm. like craving love and then i go on this first date and the guy is helping me change my tire. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, I'll pay for it. And exactly. then da, 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 da. at the beginning. And then like, yeah, I work at this. And na, na, na. and then okay, we are we, we have to do lockdown. So everything is now times a hundred. Yeah. I could find myself being a researcher. Yeah. yeah. Easily. I totally because get I have it. dated some really toxic mm. things out there. Yeah. Me, my my consciousness, even the, the toxic, the super toxic relationship I was in. I didn't have a consciousness about, it wasn't even about marriage then. I, I think I was like maybe 25 or something. Like mm. It wasn't something really I was thinking about, but it's like you you decide who someone is so early on. Mm. So just like maybe yeah. how she did, let's check. Job, check. check Decent yeah. human yeah. being, check. Boom, let's go. Mm. So like now you've decided that they're the one without all the other things that you might not think play yeah. a part in being exactly. in a healthy relationship. Mm. Oh, he doesn't have empathy. But that's not something you saw at day as, one. And that's yeah. the thing. Those things, I think mm. they take time. time they of course. And, and what happens is that the older you get, you, you feel like the luxury that you don't have anymore is it's time. time. So you're like, that's let's so speed this up. Yeah. I'm old enough to see that he's a good person. Mm. Yeah. Let's get it to the end. So even for Sharon, mm. um, I will say this, when you're in the honeymoon phase, first of all, enjoy the honeymoon phase. It mm. lasts, can last up to two years. We hope it's the all. best. Mm -hmm. But mm. as we are jumping to think about marriage, have a friend or two or three who you love and yeah. who love you, you trust, that you yeah. can go and say, am I making a sober decision yeah. here? Because yeah. if you want to make it, like to get married in the next three months with this person, mm. me, I'll be there to support you all the way because yeah. I love you <laughs> and I like this guy, mm. right? Yeah. Um, and will you be making a decision off of being in the honeymoon phase? Yes. Is yeah, it irrational? For sure. Yes. But there are many people who have made the same, same decision. Arranged marriages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it kind so of works. not, like nothing is, nothing is um, cast in stone. Everything yeah. is adjustable, whatever. Yeah. But also don't make, a, don't make very long-term decisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this. When you're overly happy. In this head, Absolutely. Give it like six months before you make, and so you can start to see, oh, what's the family life like? Mm -hmm. What family am I, am I marrying into? What kind of in-laws will I have? Yeah. Uh, what will my life look like? What will my life look, look like, like with this person? With this That's person. It. Beyond On his, a his house and his job. Yeah. I'm talking about his friends. The wider... His family. Exactly. His habits. His habits. His, yeah. Those, and those things, mm. you don't see them those because no one, shows you, <laughs> no one shows you the real thing until... 
you get Time later has on. So, yeah. Yeah. Therapy. Jeff says, like, especially if I you're single, therapy. like now, right? Exactly. Um, when you are single and you are intentionally dating, conscious dating, which is like you know yourself, you're self-aware, and now you're selecting a partner based on what works best for you, not just what feels the best for you. Because mm. as Joe said, what feels good is sometimes just what's familiar, not what's great. And yep. he says, like, you write like the core values, like the list of like you know what you're looking for, and mm -hmm. as you're dating. Like when you're approaching that feeling, it's like, are they like this? Because the person who wrote that list has more common sense than right. this one. Who's, who's just in, exactly. In and, trust, trust <laughs> and I'm using that. I'm and, using and that. Yeah, how's it going? Because what yeah. happens, by the way, also what happens is when you start liking somebody, mm. You start talking yourself out of yeah. The you get yeah, dumber. You're like, uh, you maybe get dumber. You, you, right. My friend, that, yeah. sit with yourself one mm -hmm. day and be like, wait, is yeah. it for real? Like, am I? You know what yeah. I mean? Because mm -hmm. like, okay, I know I said somebody, I want somebody like this, but it's not so bad. It's close. Yeah. Everything's not, gonna seem nothing. close to the truth when you're falling yeah. in love. So I'm doing that. I'm using like that list as kind of my anchor because, yeah, it, as you're saying, it's easy to convince yourself out of it because, especially like for me, a securely attached man. Oof. Oh, oh God. Yeah. That's what I have. Ooh, that's what you have. They're the best. Okay. So what <laughs> colors do you Girl? want for your wedding? Like, what right. should I wear? What's the design <laughs> for us? I you. I forgive you. You know. I, so called yeah. So a securely attached man is like comes to me as like. This yeah. is it. However, the question is if you'll be attracted to a security. No, attachment. I'm attracted to security. Yeah, I, think I literally so. was yeah. just seeing someone who was. However, a securely attached person doesn't mean that they don't have character issues. Of course. They can be an They're asshole, so they human. can be inconsistent with communication, of all of that. Mm. So it's like knowing like the second I take securely attached, all yeah. other things is like <laughs> there's a yeah. way, some way. Yeah. Are you are you a secure attacher? No, I'm an anxious attacher. Okay. Right. So that's a good pair. Yeah, that's a fantastic yeah. pair. So it's like But for anxious, the thing is that for anxious, if you've not mm. done the work. Mm. You mm -hmm. will never, it's hard to feel attracted to a secure. As yeah. Oh, because you need the word. boring. We are, we are attracted to avoidance more. There's, there's something called the anxious avoidant trap. Mm -hmm. That little dance. And it's very yeah. passionate. And you're like, yeah. oh my God, this is it. This is, I yeah. know, I can feel it. When you know, you know. But yeah. which you don't know. Yeah. Damn. Um. So yeah, I'm trying to uh, use that as my anchor. And so far, it's been it's been good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kept me making sober decisions. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I want us to come to the end oh, of yes. this amazing I episode. I literally we forgot we were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've gone on for over an hour. Hour. Um, Lydia, thank you so much for <laughs> lending us your amazing insights and your magnificent intelligence. Thank you. I love you as a human. I think you're <laughs> such a perfect person and I yes. cannot wait for the right person to walk into your life or you yeah. to walk into their life. No, mm -hmm. for sure he's walking into mine, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Sharon, I don't know if you have any last thoughts or so we can just wrap this um, up. No, I feel like I've said everything. You've said yeah. everything? Yeah, but thank you so much for coming. Yes. I wanted to have Lydia just, you know, on a platform together for so long. Yeah. So this has been such a treat for me. No, I'm so glad. And I'm glad we talked about this. Um, I, I guess because I, I'm talking about being single, it's like I've become like the person to talk about Oh, you're the, the poster girl? Yes. And it's not necessarily <laughs> I mean to, but I feel like I want to occupy this space where it's not yeah. just like you're in a relationship, then you talk about nothing, then you're in another yeah. one. Then you talk about mm. nothing, then you're in another. You know, it's like I want there to be like a bit more of a clear example of what's going on when somebody is is single right. and I'm happy to be that person. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Good for you. We're Love intentionally it. single. We're on Bumble. Ah. You see me outside. Yeah. yeah outside. Are you on Bumble? That's the thing I used to be I saying. Bumble. I, I, was, I was. I was, yeah. but I was. How is it? Bumble is Kenya? amazing. Bumble is nice. Is Bumble is where it's at. Really? Yeah. And as, I've met like the paid some, one. Are, do you, do you, no, I don't have the paid one. The paid like, one, I the think. The caliber has... of men yeah. is like, no, I feel like there's hope for sure. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. I love it. Okay, you know. For sure. Race for me is. Black. Okay, okay. A black. <laughs> I, someone said man. to me there's more like white uh, There are white men, people for sure. There's more white men on Bumble than there are black. I don't Is think so, accurate? but there's there's more white men, I guess, on than any other of the um apps. dating apps for yeah. sure. But yeah, no. Ma black, right, yeah. black, okay, yeah. okay. B Bumble was fun, Bumble. and I like that the girls are the ones who like make the first move. So it's right. the power is in your, and that actually your... slowly conditioning me to knowing that mm. I am the one who's choosing you. Yeah, yes, you're yeah, the one doing it. the choosing. All right, guys. I love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you have made it this far into the episode, thank you so much. Please remember to subscribe to this channel. We are brand new. We need all the help we can get to grow this channel. Um, leave a comment, like, subscribe, share with somebody if this is a conversation that you think that will, they will enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, and to all the women out there who I yeah. know for them, singlehood might not be as 
wholesome as yeah. it is for you. That's the word. Figure out how to enjoy this season in your life. I don't know how, what you can, I'm sure Lydia has so many resources on her page <laughs> for that because not, I, the thing is with singleness, the, the reason we used this uh, research is thing is because this thing of being single and feeling lonely it can really make you yeah. make mm, the wrong, real. wrong decisions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's sometimes it, you, somebody can be sitting here and they're like, yeah, that's good for you, but it doesn't work for me. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I just want to give every woman who's feeling that right now the, the encouragement that they may need. I don't yeah. know. Any support you might want, go to Lydia. <laughs> me, I always, me, I always say, figure, figure, go to therapy. Yeah. Find the love in your life that already exists yeah. that can kind of fill that cup yeah. and be patient and have hope because there's yeah. nothing else you can have. It's, it's if true. you don't have that, you, you're guaranteed to jump into a relationship. That and these are the good old days. I, that's what I tell to. myself. Mm. These are the good when old days. I'm like, I wake up and there's this husband, there's these kids, they yeah, are screaming at me. I can't breathe. I can't have a moment <laughs> yeah. to myself. I'm going to be like, what was I stressing about? Right. Being um, in my 30s, yeah. being financially stable, being free to do whatever I want. That's what I was screaming about. Mm. I want to enjoy every minute of this season. But I get it. If you've been there for six years, is it that enjoyable? Maybe, Maybe not. Maybe not. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to be in the spirit of like, these are the good old days. Yeah. Another. And that's what ha having hope looks like. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. We'll see you back here next time. And as per usual, it is related. I, I promise. promise.